and welcome to Books and Boba, a new podcast and book club where we read works by Asian and Asian American authors, and then we talk about them. <laughs> my name is Marvin Yu. I am one of your hosts for this podcast, and I'm joined by my co-host, Rira Yu. Hi, everyone. And uh, joining us today is um, geek girl and blogger, Alice Fan Chang. Hi. Um, I know Rira because we like to read a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Also joining us is former English professor, uh, current writer, and uh, all-around community supporter, Mr. Scott Okamoto. Hello. How's it going, Professor? Awesome. Great to be here. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. And welcome to the first episode of Books and Boba, the podcast. Uh, this came about because I had started reading a book, the book that we're going to talk about this episode, and uh, Rira just happened to post on Facebook that she was thinking about starting a book club. Yeah, um, that kind of started because I was talking to someone at some event and they said, oh, yeah, like there aren't a lot of Asian American authors out there. <gasps> and I just wanted to hurl my Kindle at them <laughs> and and just be like, what are you talking about? There are so many. And out of anger, I like posted on Facebook being like, I'm forming a book club. Does anybody want to join? And that's when Marvin yeah, commented. I had already been playing around the idea of a book club podcast um, because um, in addition to this, I also produce a number of other podcasts, uh, including one I do for work called The Clubcast, where we talk about Asian American issues. And I just always wanted to do a a podcast that's more of a book club. Also to force myself to read more. I find that as I got out of school, I stopped reading. I started consuming more YouTube. I do read a lot of internet stuff, though. I don't know if that counts. No. No. Yeah. Yes. Professor says no. No, it, so. does. it does. It does. <laughs> it counts. Well, should we just get into it? Yeah. Yeah. We should Let's introduce get into it. Uh, the book that we're going to talk about. So uh, for this month, what we did was we created a meetup and um, got people together to talk about our first book, Heroin Complex by Sarah Kuhn. Yay. A superhero story uh, starring Asian American characters. It's out now from Daw Books. Did you want to read the back synopsis? Um, from the back, Evie Tanaka is the put upon personal assistant to Avita Jupiter, her childhood best friend and San Francisco's most beloved superheroine. She's great at her job, blending into the background, handling her boss's epic diva tantrums, and getting demon blood out of leather pants. Unfortunately, She's not nearly as together at when it comes to running her own life, standing up for herself, or raising her tempestuous teenage sister, B. But everything changes when Evie's forced to pose as her glamorous boss for one night, and her darkest secrets comes out. She has powers, too. Now it's up to her to contend with murderous cupcakes, nosy gossip bloggers, and supernatural karaoke battles, all while juggling unexpected romance and Evita's increasingly outrageous demands. And when a larger threat emerges... Evie must finally take charge and become a superheroine in her own right, or see her city fall to full-on demonic invasion. So before we get into the discussion, I would like to uh, recommend people to read the book before uh, listening to this podcast episode, uh, just in case you don't want to be spoiled. Right. But yeah, if you want to be spoiled anyway, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so pause now, read the book. Welcome back. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed the book. We're going to get Good started job. with the... Uh, with the discussion. So, Rira, yes. why don't you start us off? Um, okay, so, um, yeah, I was interested in reading this book for our first, uh, for our first pick, mainly because uh, it had just come out uh, this past summer, and it features two Asian-American female superheroes, and I thought that was really, really cool, because you don't really see that in... TV or media, unless they're like silent ninjas or dragon ladies. And yeah, it was just like a breath of fresh air. Um, I don't know, like, shall we get into the characters or? Yeah, well, um, I guess we, we can start out with just general impressions general of impressions. the book. Yeah, like, um, I thought it was a really, really fun read. Um, like I mentioned at our meetup before also, uh, it's been a while since I read, I've read a novel. I've listened to a couple audiobooks here and there, but a actual novel, like a fiction novel, that wasn't, you know, um, even on Kindle, I haven't really read a story in a very long time. So it was kind of cool just to, you know, pick, pick it up and just not be able to put it down until I finished it. Uh, it's been a while since I've had that feeling. 
and it was a little nostalgic too, but also a little distressing because you know it was three a.m. when I finished it, and I really needed sleep. <laughs> but um, like for me, as a as someone who grew up with you know anime, manga, comic books, and you know being a big sci fi nerd, um, it was it was familiar territory, and I think that's why I took to it so easily. But also a really fascinating story, and it was really cool just to have Asian American characters who. The, their Asianness was part of their characterization, but not part of the plot. Yeah. And I thought that was super, super cool. Um, that's partly why I wanted to read it, too. It's like uh, the a lot of the books about like Asian American identity or the struggle are, are good and necessary. But a lot of times I don't necessarily uh, myself um, identify very strongly with those because... You know, I grew up in an area that had a lot of Asian Americans, so I grew up a lot uh, around a lot of Asians. So some of, you know, obviously some of that stuff is still there, but um, sometimes I'm like, oh, that's not like, I don't feel like that's like the main struggle of my life yeah. kind of thing. And then um, and then hearing about Heroin Complex was cool because it's like, I love genre fiction, I love superheroes, and um, and, you know, I was like interested in a story where like, you know, it's, like, about two Asian-American friends, like, my friends, doing, like, normal stuff, you know, plus superhero stuff, which is more awesome, but, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I think what Marvin was saying is what it's all about. You, 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 you get into this story and this other world, and you can't put it down. Um, and I think if we're lucky, we've all had that experience. We, we, <laughs> you almost don't want the book to end, and it's, there's a, it's a little bit of bittersweet feeling at the end when you finish a book that you really enjoy. yeah. Yeah, yeah. So having that is to me just great. I mean, there's, there's. I'm sure we'll talk about things we liked and things we didn't like. And you know, mm-hmm. no book is perfect, and we can we could dissect it for days. But at the end of the day, it you, it took you to another place, and you enjoyed being there, and you really liked interacting with these characters. And so that to me was why I, I liked it too. I, I I read it in about two days. Yeah. Um, and I would have sat down and just read until three, but <laughs> yeah, I had to get my kids to school in the morning. So. I I have no impulse control so it's it's really i make terrible decisions with my media consumption it's just okay shh, you don't have to i read this on the plane <laughs> <laughs> we're all friends here no but i think that's so great because you to me again that's what it's about you haven't read in a long time and it's and it just takes you back yeah like we we associate reading with chores and homework and you know i was a teacher i'm guilty for making people read a whole bunch of shit oh can i say shit yeah, yeah. um and uh, but when you find something um that you really like to read, it's it's so such a cool thing because the theater, of the mind is happening, and um, yeah, it, it's it's you make the story yours, and, yeah, and um, so yeah, so I, I I like you, really enjoyed it, and definitely glad it's here, and and of, of course all the s- social things too. I mean, so <laughs> important. And I, I handed my my daughter's Hoppa too, and mm-hmm. so I just, it's the first time I've been able to hand her a book that mostly age appropriate. She's a teenager, <laughs> but that. So this is literally you. This is um, someone that looks like you and um, is of your generation. So. Yeah. I think all around people in this table really enjoyed it. it did, I did find it. So um, we did have a meetup right before this this recording where we had a much wider range of, of opinions and people. And you know, it, it was funny that, you know, sometimes um, – so we can get into characters because I think that was one of the biggest hang-ups with some people. For me, being Asian-American, I was already invested in it. But, you know, there were some – um, one of the big criticisms was that it kind of took a while to get into the character of the the narrator, right? Of, of, of Evie, of Tanaka. Evie um, yeah. because she starts out very like she's like very much uh, a shrinking violet. She's uh, like she doesn't want to be noticed. She just wants to stay in the background and um, very much of not a control freak, but like she needs everything to kind of like go according to plan and. You know, that makes sense for her job because she has to make sure that, like, nothing goes wrong right. for her superhero boss of Ada Jupiter. Right. Yeah. So the main character, Ibi Tanaka, who's also the um, the narrator, is the personal assistant to Evita Jupiter, her friend Annie Chen, who is the superhero. She's kind of the, the not with the publicist. She's more of, like, the, She's like the more body of a woman. personal, personal assistant. assistant. Like, think yeah. Devil yeah. Wears Prada. Like, uh, like, running errands. Yeah, running errands. Picking up the cleaning laundry. Up, cleaning up messages. Like, cleaning up her, like her boss's leather yeah. suit scheduling events and the biggest <laughs> thing is handling her crisis her, yeah. tantrums. her tantrums yeah, yeah. and definitely yeah. like social media is a big part of her job like she has to tweet and stream all of the yeah uh, the, the fight fights. scenes yeah. which i thought was really like 
it was really cool and also really weird because <laughs> uh, we talked about this at the meeting on like what if like spider-man like was alive today like yeah. in this time like he is yeah alive. <laughs> he yeah. is alive but but in like the comics he he's a photographer by trade and he takes photos of spider-man him himself so yeah. like and he's the only one who can get footage of spider-man yeah. because he has so, he knows like, where it's gonna be if he existed like now he would just be snapchatting and instagramming himself <laughs> So. But then also everyone else on the streets would have pictures of Spider-Man That's as true. well. That's true. Yeah, right. anyone at any trending. of the crises that he averts. <laughs> Hashtag Spider-Man. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, that's that's one of the big interesting things about this type of contemporary superhero um, story. And also something that, you know, maybe the new Spider-Man movie will address. Who knows? But, you know, a lot of the current super, superhero movies are about putting superheroes out of like the golden age into the modern world, right? Like Superman vs. Batman was all about, you know. Oh, you watched that how movie? Would, I did. <laughs> I, I sat through it. It was terrible, but it was it was about, you know, like what do Superman appear today? And the, like, you know, how the government will react, how the public would react would react. And you no, know, I, I think that's a really interesting um uh, way to look at things right now. Um I did want to go back to what you said about um, Evie's kind of need to, for everything be, to be in control Controlled, in the beginning. Yeah. And it's interesting because, I guess, for me, knowing people similar to Evie, where that need for control isn't, doesn't come from a, like a place of like she needs to feel in power, but her need for everything to be stable because it comes from her anxiety, right? Mm, yeah. Like, it comes from her, like her knowledge her like her fear of things going out of control and like getting out of hand Mm -hmm. and i think that's kind of her story arc is coming to terms with with things she can't control things she can't control and it makes sense with uh her power right for a spoiler she has fire powers (laughs) um yeah like you know her power is dangerous it's very um like dependent on her emotions so she needs everything to be stable and i think that's why a lot of the uh people at the meetup today they said it was really hard to relate to her, to to like her in the beginning because, like, she's just kind of, uh, for a lack of a better word, boring. <laughs> like, yeah. And she kind of seems like she lets, um, like, Avita walk all over her. Like, yeah. I know it's because Avita's also her boss, but, you know, some of the stuff, it's a little bit like, you feel like you want her to stand up for herself. But she's not. But she's yeah. not. Yeah. But it's the beginning of a character arc, though. Yeah, right? and because so, she eventually does. Yeah, yeah. Eventually like you're does. not, but in the beginning, like I can see why people had a hard time, maybe. Yeah. Either like not connecting with her or like being frustrated with her because it is kind of frustrating to see that. Like, right. This is supposed to be your friend, but she's like walking all over you and kind of making your life. Like, I think. I think like in the first chapter or the f- second chapter, uh, she mentions like, oh, like there was a reporter that interviewed me and said, oh, wow, you must have the worst job right. in the world. And she and her response to it was, yeah, but I'm the best at it. Yeah. 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 yeah so she's so I guess I don't agree necessarily that she's a flat character. It's just she's just someone that you guys don't like at the beginning. Yeah. Yeah. Like um, she's frustrating. Yeah. It's frustrating to see. And, and we all I think feel that the same thing. Yeah. Um, but it's interesting. Like, I don't know. Did, did anybody look at like. Superman is, and and say I wish he wasn't such a nerd by day. <laughs> <laughs> why is Clark Kent so lame? I, I, it's just the lore. Yeah. It's just the way the characters develop. You know why is Batman so so like sour, which is such a sourpuss? You know, <laughs> like he's so dark. Cause Gosh, why can't dead. he smile once in a while? Like, like <laughs> we. We, I think we we want so badly because this is so few books that have us yeah. in it. We want we want it to be us exactly. And, and right. so we don't just let it just be this character who develops into this thing. We we we, we finally got a character and like, ah, she's kind of a pushover. This is <laughs> disappointing, you know. But like as the story plays out, she becomes so it's this larger than life person yeah. and, and comes into her own. It's this we talked about it, the hero's journey. She it's, she hits all the beats of that. And um so where where we judge the character sh- should be the, the whole arc, not just right. Um, right. How, how we first encounter. And that's super interesting. That's something that we didn't really talk about before, but the, the whole rep sweats of it all. Like the yeah, I'm sure the author had like serious yeah, I think I've read while <laughs> writing her. This book. Like she wrote something yeah, where like, she was talking about the rep sweats. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like it's, it's kind of sad that this is the only story where you have protagonists like this, where you do have that pressure of who, do, who am I speaking for? Right. And like I mentioned before, like I, I, I know personally know people like Evie and people like 
any, like Avita too, who, you know, are two different like sides of one is someone who is obviously super awesome, but not really fulfilling their potential or yeah. afraid of their potential. Yeah. And one is someone who like works real hard and like tries to be perfect. Right. Yeah. right. Yeah. So oh, I, I, guess, I guess I should, I should point out Naomi Hirohara has a new series of books about a Hapa main character who's jo- joins the LAPD nice. named Ellie Rush. And there are, uh, there are two books in the series out currently. So, um, Sarah right, and Naomi so are, are friends. Awesome. And uh, so there are there are two there are two, <laughs> two, <laughs> two series of books uh, that have uh, half Japanese, half white <laughs> <laughs> characters. We need some Koreans and Chinese and, yeah. um, and yeah. every variation they're in. But yeah, hopefully yeah. it'll become just part of the. the but yeah, I mean the the, canon. Rep, the rep splits thing though is like it's difficult. It's kind of like I mean the broader conversation about how like there hasn't been like. Uh, like a female-led superhero movie, for right. example, and then it's hard because it's like every. Then it turns into like every female superhero that shows up on screen. You expect them to be everything, you mm-hmm. know. Like yeah. they get one aspect of something like wrong or kind of problematic, and everyone blows right. up over it. Yeah. But that's because there's like only one, and <laughs> right. like one character can't carry like everyone's expectations. And you right. know, that's the good thing about. Uh about this book you get two yeah Yeah. so it's not like yeah so you can't be like oh my gosh this one person's such a pushover it's like well then you have Avita who's like you know a diva yeah the pusher literally the the boss yeah Yeah. Yeah, this breaks the rule of one in Hollywood so you can have a hard time making a movie because there's more than one (laughs) non-white lead well they kind of have like the band of fire thing going too though they have you know the the hero the uh, the backup and like the the other Know, the, the supporting cast, the supporting yeah. cast, the cleanup crew, like yeah, yeah. Literally the, the cleanup, cleanup crew. crew. Yeah, I think like Scarlett the... Johansson is going to have to play Evita for this. Too. <laughs> <laughs> she can play the uh, the the kung fu trainer, or the, the Lucy. physical Lucy? trainer. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no, the trainer can be Asian, though. You know, that's Mr. true. Miyagi character. If we were if we were casting this yeah. as as white Hollywood, yeah, that's how. It <laughs> no, no, things would <laughs> change though. Like, I'll, I'll say this like, with the rep sweats, and we have t- TV characters now. Yeah, more than one show. Yeah. And we and we still don't have drama in, in movies. We have some comedy and, of course, our kung fu. But yeah. um, got Chloe Bennett as a Chloe Bennett yeah, as, as an yeah. Asian American yeah. superhero. Yeah. <laughs> and Mina went on there also. As, as, yes. she's kind of like the talent to meet us. Been yeah. a few and yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. So um, speaking of the boss, the pusher, <laughs> um, Avita um, Annie Annie Chen, right? That was her real name. Yeah. Um, Jupiter a- Avita Jupiter, Jupiter Avita Jupiter yeah. is the the superhero. superhero name. She's like the the savior of San Francisco. This and, book uh, takes place in San Francisco, by the way. <laughs> I think <laughs> we, we forgot mention that? to mention that. Yeah, this book takes place in the real world. Um, cupcakes uh, and all. But yeah, um, the character of um, Avita Jupiter is also, um, she's pretty much the second lead in, in this book, right? Yeah. She's, uh, she's like almost the antagonist. Like, yeah. yeah. I mean, a lot of conflicts are created because of her actions, um, obviously, Aveda is like the boss, and she's very pushy, very diva like, and um, like halfway in, like not halfway into the book, but like like midway, like yeah. she, like Evie, kind of takes the spotlight from her. She steals and, the thunder. Yeah, she yeah. steals. Yeah, she, that's exactly what happens. And, um, <laughs> Although it's still as Aveda, it's just not. Yeah, yeah. Not, yeah. yeah she takes the place of her. Like, yeah. there's magic in this book too. Yeah. There's there's a dude the magic powers who can. Who can make you look different? Yeah, yeah. yeah. We'll we'll get back to him later. <laughs> I have some qualms about him, um, <laughs> but like, I don't know. I I didn't think Avita was like like a super bitch or anything. Like mm-hmm. I I thought like she had um, like she had motivation. Like she had reasons for her actions. Like right. it was like very understandable. Like why she acted the way that she did. Right. Um, the tiger parents yeah like she had tiger parents and she is like she's a perfectionist she has like mastered the 10,000 hours of like work like she has a very strong work ethic right because the big the big um not twist but the 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 reveal i guess is that her powers isn't her powers yeah like like, she like her her being a superhero has nothing to do with her powers like her powers uh her power is very, very, very weak telekinesis. <laughs> like, she can barely move things with her mind, which is, uh, Alice mentioned at the meeting that, like, it was really interesting because, you know, she has, like, such a strong mental state of, like, I'm going to get this done. I'm going to right. do this. But, like, her power 
like it's that funny relies on mental power <laughs> yeah like, like it's... it's funny that her actual supernatural power like doesn't manifest the way that like she actually is which is that if she puts her mind to something she can make it happen like she literally made <laughs> herself into a superhero despite essentially not having powers yeah you know but yeah she pretty much made herself uh batman like, yeah she's just like i'm going to yeah. like, work out i'm going to like without have, all like, the gadgets uh, yeah, yeah without all the gadgets yeah, yeah i'm but... gonna turn myself into a martial arts master so that i can fight yeah like demon cupcakes you know <laughs> but like well, she has she has instead of like alfred she has her team of of helpers like she has yeah. her, her trainer her team. she has her science dude she has her uh personal assistant, her personal assistant and um and then a social media person yeah <laughs> i mean um <laughs> like I kind of related to Aveda like like pretty well. Like I related to both characters, Evie and Aveda, but like I definitely had tiger parents and I felt <laughs> like and like uh there's a passage in the book, I, I wrote wrote it down. Um it, it's from chapter four and it says that kept her off the doctor train, so she was always searching for something else she could be the absolute best at. Something that would impress her parents and force them to finally accept her as their perfect daughter. And, like, when I read that, I was like, oh, <laughs> like, like, oh, I know how that feels. Like, like, I'm definitely not a doctor. I'm, I'm a writer. And, you know, my parents were not happy about that. <laughs> um, so, like, with Aveda being a superhero, it's kind of like she's picking this creative career path and it's not right. good enough for her parents. So it, it kind of makes sense that she's, like, she demands perfection of herself. And I think that's also a very uh, common trait in Asian American women. Like we, we do try to strive for this like perfect package. Um, I mean, I'm not saying like all Asian American women do that, but it is like a tendency that I've noticed. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, found that, I thought it was really heartbreaking when that reveal happened, when the backstory of her parents, and then you realize, Oh, uh, you know, we've been sort of laughing at her and, and being critical of her through th- this whole book until you find out uh, she's got fucked up parents who, <laughs> who still, even though she's a superhero, they just still don't accept her, her identity and they still don't give her any love and support. And yeah, yeah that's heartbreaking. And then, and then to me, like psychologically, it makes sense. You have to suspend your disbelief with the whole superhero thing. But the family dynamic yeah. s- seems to make a lot yeah. of sense. Yeah. We and kill ourselves to get our parents' uh, approval. Yeah, and kind yeah. of why she, like, craves attention a little right. bit. Like, her right. other people. It was withheld from her. Yeah, yeah, where she's like, well, you know, if I can't make them, like, love me, like, I can do the best that I can be and, like, and still have other people love me. Yeah. Yeah. So the central conflict of the most of the story is actually between Evie and Aveda, right? Like, Evie kind of, kind of coming to her own and Avita kind of coming to terms with that because there's, there's there is a part I know Rira you mentioned where mm-hmm. Avita could very easily become the villain of the story. Right? Oh yeah. yeah. Did anyone yeah. think that in the back of your mind that Avita was going to turn bad or something because no. she was so so jealous? No. I no, kind of felt I was like the only one. Well, okay. So <laughs> the big um, so there's a third character that um, that Evie also has conflict with, which is her little sister, who is just like. The worst <laughs> team. She like she she's worst a brat. and best. Like, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, she's like going through angsty teen years with like, you no, know, their their mother passed away, right? And then their their father is like searching for himself in like his mm-hmm. like pretty much their father joined a yoga cult somewhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. he's like in the wilderness. So she, in, in addition to dealing with um avita she's also trying to raise b and you know, keep her in tabs and she you know as someone who needs everything under control having a uh, a firebrand teen little sister kind of throws that into chaos as well um so actually so one of the big um the, the big climax of the of the story is that the showdown with with the big bad we can talk about the big bad later but i always thought that it would would have been avita who kind of like betrays her uh, you know but it turns out to be this, yeah. yeah. So yeah. like like I kind of like in the back of my head I always thought you, like you create something that's better than you and you become jealous and you become right. the enemy. It's right. kind of like a trope in a lot of like, right. No, yeah. it's part even of sci- even like hero's journey thing yeah. just to be betrayed by yeah. someone close to you. I think in the back so. of my mind I was just like 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 I thought like oh that's not gonna happen like <laughs> Avita's not gonna be, become the villain but like I I think in the uh, like a part of my brain was just like, oh, but it's a possibility, <laughs> right? Like, and I was like, please don't let that. Or at happen. least she would throw a wrench in everything. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's just, it's just like I don't, I don't want to see like these two great female characters be pitted against each other. Like, right. it, like I wanted like a story where 
like the friendship while it's like complex like it is like strong right. and like it comes through and it did and i was really happy about that yeah lucky yeah. for you it did <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah that's why we're here yeah because yeah. the setup is so much that like I mean, it's not obvious when you fir- when you first start reading it or, like, if you read the blurb, but, like, as you're reading it, you're like, oh, there's, like, a big emphasis on, like, this friendship that they have, even though, you know, both of them are, like, different people and kind of cause problems for each other. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, like, yeah, so, and because of that, I was like, oh, it would really suck if ultimately, like, she has to, like, defeat Evita or something, you yeah. know? Because then it's like, oh, well, like, I get it. If, if this was going to be shown as like drama yeah Yeah. like if it was just like going for drama points or if this was going to be like a story about like a a truly toxic relationship where like you're like oh wait actually you should get away from evita (laughs) because she's like really really terrible for all aspects of your your life Mm. then i guess like i could see her becoming the villain but because the story wasn't that like i was like oh it would really suck if she became the villain that's true because there's a lot of um backstory of how why they're friends how they became friends and like how this is like this was their relationship as children and then when you know Evie had her very traumatic experience in in grad school like Evita was the one who like offered her shelter right yeah. right I mean like let's talk about how they became friends because I thought that was <laughs> really funny um so they became friends like in in like grade school I think kindergarten or like first grade some sometime in really elementary young. school and uh they had like First, Aveda has a lunchbox moment. Uh, she she brings soup dumplings for lunch, and I think that's like the most delicious lunch you could ever have. But her uh, white never... classmates are not very supportive of her lunch choice, and uh, she gets made fun of. But uh, you know, Evie, the only other Asian in her class, like she doesn't do anything about it. Right. But then the next day, Evie comes to school with spam musubi, also delicious. Yes, uh, and she gets made fun of, and Aveda's just eats all of them I mean, like eats all of the spam musubi that like uh evie had brought for her classmates and and that's how j- how they bond they just bond yeah. because like and she saves her by taking the attention yeah by right. taking yeah. the attention yeah i like how it shows she's a little crazy too yeah <laughs> yeah like she gets like like she's always she, been she, this she way yeah she she doesn't just <laughs> she's like she's noble and yeah. a little crazy she does it she's noble but she also like turns into like 11 I think yeah. <laughs> I think you need that trait to be a superhero. No, exactly. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah. it's yes. a perfect setup. I want to know what parents are packing soup dumplings for their kids because, like, I have Chinese parents and I never got soup dumplings. Same. Right. It seems like an unwieldy. It seems lunch. like a lot of work to put to like a school yeah. lunch. I don't know. Have you seen lunches these these days? Like, kids, <laughs> kids these days with kids these days with, with their lunches. I also feel like you know soup dumplings are probably one of the least offensive of the. Yeah. so-called weird yeah. like Asian foods that someone could bring to school. <laughs> I just I just like laugh. I do love the whole concept. Yeah. 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 I, I just like laugh so hard. Like it was like later in the books uh, where like one of the side characters uh, like says like oh like I want to take Aveda to this like authentic oh, yeah. like soup dumpling soup dumpling place and and like Evie's just like like her commentary is just like oh it's just yeah. like weird that all the exotic food that we ate as children yeah, that like, got made fun of is now like the cool like the hipster super popular. fair that and it's like San Francisco so it's like, even funnier yeah. yeah that was just a sick burn for all of San Francisco like <laughs> 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 um or should we, should we talk about should um, probably talk more about their relationship though, yeah. right? Like Yeah, and before we get that, I just you said the main conflict was between Avita and Evie, but I would argue also, I have to play English professor here. Yeah. Uh, there is with Evie and herself is the, oh, is yes. the other oh, yes. right. equal, yes. equally important conflict. Yes. She's, she's wrestling with her identity. She, this person yeah. she's carved out and the person that she's could have She does down. talk to her. So she has a character for herself, right? Like the inner voice. Right. Yeah. Yeah, with yeah, well, the fire. Yeah. The, the, and it is it is um it is interesting how her personality does go through a shift as she becomes more and more like because she's being pushed to be a Vita, she's right. also becoming more herself because exactly. she's yeah, good point. Yeah, right. And then that help and it enables her to stand up to Vita and enables her to access these parts of her personality that she had been pushing down for her, her whole adult life. Right. Right, right. Yeah, and it like like I think I mentioned it earlier, but it like makes sense with her power, her firepower, which relies on her emotions and right. Yeah. Well, you know, fire, you know, fire can nurture, but fire can also burn. Oh, right. okay. <laughs> but like, yeah, like as the book goes on, as, as the book goes on, like, 
like in the beginning her fire powers are unstable dangerous right. but like as she like is able to uh kind of embrace her emotions and kind of like stop the self-loathing from mm-hmm. like sitting in like her firepower becomes like more powerful but also like like easier to control and right she kind of like grows into herself yeah like the more control she has over like who she is the more control she has yeah. over her powers i guess yeah. it's kind of like maybe i'm just like i just had a brainstorm maybe it's like this acceptance of yourself right yeah. acceptance yeah. of your power which is kind of a very asian american identity type of <laughs> trope as well you right? sound so like <laughs> uneasy going into the topic. <laughs> Um, I mean, not to draw like yeah. so much, but also, I mean, it's 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 definitely you you can tell in the beginning of the book. Also, as she struggles with her power, that she's she doesn't want it, right? It's something right. that she wants to erase, and she even wants to like when when the opportunity presents itself, she's like, yeah, yeah, let's get rid of it because you know. Yeah, why, I mean, that's the whole reason why thing. she like agrees to become Avita for like while like Avita's like healing her leg. Yeah. Yeah. Which, by the way, reminded me of Forty Second Street. Like, I don't know if you guys have. Wow, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, is that the John Cho lawyer movie? I mean, the musical. No, the musical. Oh, oh no, I haven't seen. <laughs> that. What am I thinking of? That's, it's that's <laughs> kind of old. I'm surprised you've seen it. Yeah, it's like it's pretty old, but <laughs> yeah, it's it's like the same like situation where like the main lead like you know breaks her leg and mm. like someone has to like, yeah, take someone over. has to take over. Wasn't that also Showgirls? Wasn't that a Showgirls? It's, yeah. it's, it's like a, <laughs> it's a, it's a lot of other shows. <laughs> yeah, it's one of the, the plots. Yeah. Wasn't that also like Dave? Yeah, no, it, it's, <laughs> that's me. You can, we can keep thinking of all these. Yeah, we can, these, yeah. Uh, yeah, you gotta be me. And then that yeah. opens up this whole yeah. right. thing. Um, yeah. Um, we should probably talk about, uh, we, we've been just kind of hinting at it, the villains, the antagonists. <laughs> right. The actual non avita antagonists. <laughs> so they kind of, so the other kind of did a a a switch on us, right? Because yeah. you, you thought one person was going to be a villain, which is the gossip columnist, yeah. who is you know the the, mod, the modern day J. Jonah Jameson of Spider Man, the one who wants to take him down, right? Like, she, and it turns out to be her like her minion, fame grubbing, like fame. What's the what's the term for someone who's just like a a Klingon? They're not Klingon, but Klinger onger of like famous people, like leech, groupie. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> No, this was like the classic uh, Harry Potter. It's, it's Professor Quirrell this whole time. We thought it was Snape. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it turns out to be the uh, the owner of the of the lingerie store with yeah. a very classy name. <laughs> yes, Pussy Queen. <laughs> um, she turns out to be a demon, like yeah. the 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 source of all the um, the supernatural goings on in San Francisco, and it also turns out that. The reason, she's not very good at it. Yeah, the, the reason all that thing. stuff happens is because she sucks at being a, yeah. a demon. To queen. me, this was like less <laughs> about a, a classic bad guy, and this is part of the comedy and the the, the universe that she's set up. Um, to me, the book's more about the relationship of herself and her friends, mm-hmm. and then this this is just a funny, awesome yeah setup. That I don't know if you could take it too seriously because you know she's just bad at what she, she she's this demon queen who kind of fucked up the whole entry of, yeah. into this world, and then is recruited the worst possible people and they don't even like her i, I love that like they're all like yeah. rolling their eyes at everything she says yeah. and, and one of the one of the her. members at the meetup today uh mentioned that that reminded him of invader zim where like they, there's just yeah, like, yeah. oh you need to like take over a planet but you're kind of really bad yeah, at yeah. like and that's doing the that comic element of the yeah. story which is just, right. just go Great. here this place is called earth just yeah, like, take over yeah. San Francisco. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I like that. I think that was, like, a, the incompetent villain thing, I think, was, like, a fun way to, like, subvert that trope. Because right. it's, like, exactly. of course. Yeah. Of course there's, like, an other world with demon people who want to come over and take over. And, like, you know, if it was really serious, we'd all be rolling our eyes and being, like, oh, this again. Of yeah. course. Yeah. But it's, like, funny. Like, it... By being by making it a funny thing, it was like it felt refreshing because yeah. you're like, oh, she's just not very good at being yeah. evil. There's some danger. That, you know, yeah, there, like there's she's some still real scary. Power there. Yeah. But yeah, there was still a threat, but the threat was more like from like the hero side of like yeah, like their her loved ones are like yeah. kidnapped. <laughs> yeah, and it's just like oh, okay, well, of course the stakes are up a little yeah. bit. But it's kind of funny. I think maybe it's also a commentary on like this is what happens when you create 
a group without those bonds, right? Because <gasps> right, because like Ooh. she was trying to create her own like posse of like supporters, but like they all hated each other. If she had just gotten a hug earlier on, yeah. she wouldn't have been <laughs> so bad. I mean, she recruited like these local celebrities that that aren't really all that famous. And right. Yeah. The like, one movie star. I guess, yeah. Famous, yeah. And it's just like, wow, like your plan is really bad. And <laughs> it's like you came to San Francisco and you're like, oh, I want to be popular. Oh, like, I guess these are the cool people. And I, I'm, I'm just going to like brain, like I'm going to make them into zombies. And <laughs> and then I'll be cool. And then I'll be cool. And people will accept me. And it's just like, okay. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. There's so many layers to it because on the blog, she always yeah. got like that last little paragraph, and it's just that was a, my this favorite meek, part. Yeah, and little, oh, and and I have this to say too, and it's <laughs> such a sad. You feel, almost feel bad for the. Yeah, right. I think you do feel bad for her as as this character. Even yeah. even when you find out she's in, behind it all, it's like, aw. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> because even when when her minions are officially minionized, yeah, they, they don't. They're still giving her, her like tons yeah. of shit. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, they're still idiot. sassing her. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like well, criticizing all her moves. Yeah, yeah. she's like, yeah, doing that's a not gonna work. Conversation with like with yeah. they're like, why are you doing this? Yeah, um, I someone brought it up at the at the book meeting too. That like it's an interesting. Speaking of that, like creating your own superhero or super villain groups. That like it's an interesting parallel because the main villain and one of her main minions, like to the public. At first, it's like the main minion, Maisie, she's this gossip blogger. She's the star. You know, she's the famous one. And then, like, we find out later that her, her like, hanger-on friend is actually the main bad guy. But, like, it's an interesting parallel because it's kind of like Evie and Aveda. Because, you know, Aveda is this larger-than-life, like, diva character. She gets the spotlight. And, like, you know, Evie's, like, sort of this person off in the background that's right. always tagging along because trying to clean up her messes or whatever. actual power, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's interesting. And, she, yeah, she has the actual power. So it's interesting to see the parallel between their two relationships because, you know, Maisie and Shasta don't really have a real relationship other than, like, yeah. than like you know, kiss up and, like, fam- yeah. famous person <laughs> or, they're, like, they're using each other. evil person yeah. and minion. Yeah. But, like, Aveda and and Evie have this, like, real friendship. So it's interesting to see, like, you think, like, one relationship might be toxic, but then you look at one that's actually toxic, yeah. and you're like, oh, I, I get it. Like, this <laughs> one's just, it's a little bit toxic, but it's complex, yeah, and yeah. it can be fixed. <laughs> but the other one's just bad. <laughs> yeah. Let's talk about the um, other character, the, the other supporting characters. Okay. Um, and, well, Scott's got to take gotta it off. got to pick up children. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, thanks for joining us. Thanks for joining us. Dad, Come back next time, next time. We'll, we'll schedule schedule this a little a little more time but yeah ah, cool um glad to be thanks for your good job your, yeah scott welcome yeah. on everybody um i guess we can tag someone in if you want yeah dan you want you want to jump in sure all right <laughs> scott's out but uh we're tagging in dan rickmers hello part of our he's he's here to bring the uh the the gringo perspective <laughs> to <laughs> <laughs> just a yeah just a down south country boy <laughs> attitude here but um, he was actually the one from the uh, from the meetup that brought up the, the uh, Invader Zim uh, metaphor, which is yeah, interesting. Yeah, any yeah. Nickelodeon references you need me to bring to this? Awesome. I was also responsible for Forty Second Street as yeah, well. Yeah, you you were. <laughs> <laughs> you mentioned it, and I was like, oh yeah, you're right. <laughs> um, we're t- oh yes, yeah, so let's talk a little bit about the other supporting characters. Oh um, yeah, let's talk. Ab- okay, first off, like we were talking about Shasta, the main villain, who mm-hmm. is a demon queen, who is incompetent at everything. Turns out, plot twist: she's the mom of the romantic interest, <laughs> Nate. Um, I was a little bit weirded out by that because I thought she was much younger. From like, yes, yeah, and I think she is younger. She just it was like didn't a body age mod or thing. Well, I don't think. Like I don't think Nate was born though. Like he was like spawned. Like he was no. Part she was of- born. She, she got pregnant. Yeah, she said really? she was pregnant. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I, I I read it to mean like she like because he was part of like her one of the spells, right? Or maybe I've spent a while since I've actually. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. They didn't go into too much detail on the birthing process. Okay. But, Perhaps yeah. that's for the sequel. They there can, was like, a stork know, really involved. <laughs> it, I mean demons, right? Yeah. Like, but who, who think, knows how their biology really yeah, works? Yeah. But I think she. I think as Shasta, she's like a young body. Yeah. But he, because I think he mentions like, oh, last time I saw her, she was an old, old crone. Old crone. Oh. Yeah. yeah. So that's why he's like, oh, that's why I didn't recognize her. Oh. Yeah. So. But like that was like, I but was, it was a little weird. bit weirded out by that because it was like, it, it just seemed like there wasn't a setup for that. Yeah. yeah. So I was like, whoa, left field. Okay. But 
Uh, well, I mean, he kind of knew. So Nate is the the science person from the from Team, crew. Team Jupiter. Yeah. And he always knew he had something to hide, though, right? He was kind of cryptic and mysterious and like... We also mentioned this at the book club meeting. I'm going to keep mentioning the book club meeting. You should come. (laughs) Um, (laughs) um, We mentioned how like Nate was like the angel in uh, the Buffy series for (laughs) the TV folks out there. Yeah, like he's like mysterious and you know that he has something to hide. And oh, look, he happens to be a demon. Um but he also was like a giant nerd in the beginning, right? He was like the egghead of the team, right? Yeah, but so is David Boreans, you know? <laughs> <laughs> <It's> big nerd. <laughs> um, yeah, like he, like he is the nerd of the group. He's the brains. Like he does the research. He, um, like he collects all the evidence from like the the fight scenes. But uh, like he wasn't really described as the typical laboratory. Uh, like a typical scientist you know like i expected him to be like the lean type like he had in the book he's described to have like biceps and yeah. muscles he's and he just happens really to hot have, <laughs> yeah he just happens to be like in an alpha male body but like he he's like also like really smart and i'm like no like you need to go one way or the other he's either like this really hot like like really hot buff alpha guy or he's like still a hot but like Maybe like, maybe he's like reverse. She's all that. Where like he takes off, he takes off his glasses or something. Like oh, he's put those back on. Put those yeah. back on. <laughs> oh. uh, no, he. I think he's like a scientist in the way that a hot cop is a real cop. Right. You know? <laughs> <laughs> well, this yeah. is like like he is the romantic interest. So I understand. Like you have right. to make him hot. It's yeah. Be sexy. I really hate that word. Was he hot. also like, portrayed as like like a goth dude or something? He like wore no, black. No, he's just all black. black. Yeah. 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 yeah, I didn't think he was like goth, just that he wore black. But um, well, what? Uh, so Sarah Sarah Kuhn was at our at the meetup earlier, and she kind of talked about that, which like makes more sense after she said it, because yeah. it was all that like, why is he like an alpha male body? And he's like, but he's a scientist guy. But and she said that she was writing it as like um, sort of as like to subvert that whole alpha male thing in urban fantasy. Mm-hmm. So I thought that was interesting because I was like, oh yeah, he totally is like by his description based on those books i'm like yeah "Yeah, he totally has like an alpha male body (laughs) and like that whole like oh keeping a secret and then you find out he's a demon and like people are totally okay with it yeah yeah. oh okay so sure i I get that so i'm like oh i see why she did that but the thing is like i also mentioned this earlier um like his him being a demon like, his demon powers are useless. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Are, are borderline useless. It's just being super observant. And I'm like, yeah. and I'm just like, how is that different from, like, just being a scientist? You have to, like, notice things. You have to, right. like, well, yeah. Wasn't this all power also knowing how things work? Like. I, I guess. like His demon some... power is to watch how it's made a lot. <laughs> you know who else had that power? Siler from Heroes. And he became a serial killer. So you know. Oh yeah. He did. Oh well, this Look book is uh, the start of a trilogy. So <laughs> yeah. so maybe we'll get into that. <laughs> but what did you guys? Um... <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> so when I first saw the book and the cover, I thought it was a young adult book, <laughs> and it turns out that uh, there were sex scenes in it, and I'm okay with that. I read erotica, like I'm no shame, <laughs> but. Um, yeah, I like got to the first sex scene and I was like, whoa, hold on. <laughs> so this is the first book I've read in a long time. And like <laughs> I have I've never had um, exposure to the romance genre of a fiction or adult fiction. So it was definitely like I did also buy the bill of goods that this was a young adult story. The cover tricked us. Never but then we got that part. I was like, cover. oh, oh, like these Go are very on. descriptive. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, it's really it's really not that explicit. It was just, it just was a surprise. It was very surprising, yeah, because yeah, it does look <laughs> like a like it would be a young adult. Yeah, book. I think it's explicit if you think it's for like like young teens. Yeah, but then if you're like, no, this is actually for adults. It just has kind of a fun cover. Yeah, then you're like, oh, okay, all right, it's yeah. fine. Yeah. yeah, and it makes sense too. Like if you think about the the age, the age. of the heroines because they're all in their early like twenties, you know. So it's like so you're kind of like okay, like I can see that this is not young adult like necessary in the category but yeah i i thought it was like more young adult skewing too and then and then when i got there i was like oh this is not not what i thought it was (laughs) (laughs) 
But like, uh, what did you guys think of the romantic relationship between uh, Nate and Evie? Because they kind of start off on like obviously like the wrong foot. It's a romance yeah. thing. Yeah. Like, of course you have to start off on on the wrong yeah. foot. I wasn't surprised because of how much they were like how much they were fighting. I yeah. was like, they're fighting so much. They must. I also didn't understand why they were fighting so much. Yeah. 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 I, I was think like, oh, they were are gonna you just get together fighting later. each that's other why. because you're sexually attracted to each other? And that's why you're just constantly and that fighting? Seemed to be well, I mean, that's why was. he was fighting with her. But I think um, part of the her awakening was kind of discovering that, wait, this guy is hot, right? <laughs> yeah. Because, like, she hadn't noticed it before. That was I got the impression her... she was lying to herself, though, yeah. like, where she was, like, like the the internal monologue that she kept having, like, where yeah. she was, like, nope, I have this robot voice where I don't like it. Like, where you're like, you don't even really believe that. <laughs> like, yeah. I mean, definitely, um, she started describing him as, like, his you know, shoulders or something more, like, descriptively. And then her inner monologue was like, wait, I don't think that. Right? Wasn't there, there a part yeah, like that? There was, yeah. yeah, there was a part like that. But speaking of, like, broad shoulders, I, like, I, like highlighted it apart. <laughs> and, like... Bookmark for later. Yeah, it was... I, I I was like obviously surprised <laughs> by uh, by the sex scenes, but it wasn't like anything that uh, I haven't I hadn't seen before. Um, why is it not loading? Okay, but like the sex scenes, like instead of it being like really sexy, it, I just thought they were really silly and kind. Yeah. Of, like there was some there was some cheese in those right. in, in those scenes, and one of the scenes that uh, w- one of the lines that like made me laugh out loud for quite a long time was um he was so big those broad shoulders that gorgeous chest i couldn't help but wonder if he was you know proportional <laughs> they're just like <laughs> there, there's like a lot of those scenes in, in, in like the really intimate scenes and uh, is, that, is that how girls think no <laughs> <laughs> But there was like another scene where like uh, it was like the ice cream scene where yeah. where like they're in Nate's lab in the basement and like Nate is like putting ice cream on Evie and like kind of like cleaning it up with his mouth. But right. um, <laughs> but like her Evie's inner monologue is just like she keeps saying science is awesome. Right. Science is awesome. <laughs> well, because like probably in high school, like she had to like make ice cream in chemistry class. <laughs> And she just loved that experience, you know, sense memory. <laughs> but, like, as as much as I, like, you know, laughed and, like, cringed during those scenes, I, I thought they were, like, really fun. Yeah. And I feel like it fits her character. It really you know, does, she's kind yeah. of, like, dorky about that stuff. So yeah. I feel like, you know, or, like, you know, she's, I don't know. It's, like, fits her, like, voice, I think, yeah. that she's kind of, like, I know you had more, silly. I know you had more issues with the character of uh, Scott. Scott. Yeah. <laughs> right. Well, I had issues with both, <laughs> with all of the male characters, simply because, like, I, like, I, I was so into the Aveda Evie relationship. I was like, why are men in this book? Right. <laughs> like, they're, just, they're just tacked on, right? Uh, like, I'm yeah. just like, oh, like, like the romantic relationship's okay, like, right. it, it's fine, but like, that's not the main part of the story. So, like, yeah. I, I, I was just kind of a little bit like, oh, like, I can just kind of brush this off, Scott aka the magic dude the guy who like does all of the um all of the necessary magic for evie to turn into aveda while aveda is injured i had issues with him he just kept showing up and i was like (laughs) why are you showing up like you're like you're not a love interest (laughs) like i thought he was gonna be a villain because he kept showing up and he was like being so nice but it seemed like it seemed like he had unrequited feelings for evie the protagonist and i was like okay well like something's got to give like like he has to there has to be some kind of secret but there was no secret yeah like there's this whole backstory here where it's like oh yeah like we had sex once you know at prom prom. and then now we're just totally cool right (laughs) right 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 i was expecting that to like be pulled out later and it was uh he was also like avita's Avita's. high school crush yeah and like you know in in a fight scene like avita kind of pulls out that card saying like oh you had sex with like the guy that i like right i was like okay well i don't really care about scott so it's not really (laughs) that much of a big deal um also it was bad apparently so yeah 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 i just thought he I don't think I 
I didn't have like deeper suspicions about him, um, other than I thought he was going to be like the th- you know the other the half of triangle. the love triangle, which yeah. I'm glad didn't happen because you know like I'm not really interested in that because like Rira said the. Most interesting relationship is between Aveda and Evie. So, you know, Love Triangle would just make that, just take more attention away from that. Yeah. And yeah, Scott's like, he's a really, really minor character in this book. So it's, he, he's like kind of a non-character. So it would suck if I had to spend like more time <laughs> yeah. reading about him and Evie instead of like Evie and I, Aveda. I, I, um, I guess um, the last like kind of plot relationship we had to talk about is the one between Evie and her sister, which becomes kind of the the most important one for the climax. Yeah, because it, the it climax kind of, of the saves book. the day. Um, um we we talked about B or Beatrice, I think that's yeah, her name. Her home, her home. Uh, like she is a complete brat. She is like uh, she's a teenager and Ugh, she causes a lot of teen. problems. She like drinks and like goes out to like public events that her sister's working at and like causes a lot of embarrassment. But, um, you know, it's like you have to like kind of understand that because of all the family circumstances that's that's kind of happened, uh, she is that way. And it makes sense that she is that way. Um, It turns out that she has a superpower and her power is um, like like, reverse empathy. Yeah. Reverse. Yeah. I think that's what she she projects her feelings out into the world and makes other people feel it. Is that what it was? I think so. Something like that. Yeah, something like that. Um, but there's like in in the final showdown, like Evie has to get her sister to be angry in order to close the per- portal and like suck the uh, villain back into where she where she came from. And uh, one one of the members at uh, at book club, she mentioned like, oh, I think it was uh, I think it was Lily actually. Um, she she said like, oh, I really like that because it validated like a woman's anger like it was okay to be angry and like i i didn't really think about that before because especially in asian american culture (laughs) it's not okay to it's not okay for girls to get angry it's kind of considered to be like like disobedient and like like the opposite of demure and especially not angry yeah especially not angry in like a like a showy way. Yeah. Because I feel like, you know, if you're angry, but you like do what Evie did and like tamp it down or yeah. like, you know, or even like in an Avita way where you're just cold to people, then it's like, I almost feel like, not that it's like more acceptable, but kind of like, I feel like I've seen that more, but to be like explosively like showy Like Dragon anger, Ball Z anger. Yeah, just like, like shouting at people. <laughs> yeah. Like, I feel like that's definitely more like taboo, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. So... That was interesting. Um, I did think she was so bratty, though. Like, yeah. I really yeah. disliked her. I felt like she... I mean, I, yeah, after all the background and stuff, I I understand, like, where she's coming from and, like, that she's acting out. But she did read kind of young to me because she's supposed to be, like, 17. Yeah, but she she sounded 14. Yeah. yeah. She, that, I think that's, like, one of the things that, like, threw me off a little bit for, in terms of her brattiness. Yeah. I where it's, like saw her more, like, as... More of an obstacle than like a character for. Well, yeah, like right. she yeah. like she sets the, uh, she pretty much sets the stage for right. for Evie to become Aveda's like doppelganger. Yeah. Um, because what happens like they go to like this uh, gala and uh, like demons take over that. But uh, so this is how the demons work. Like demons go through the portals and they take form of whatever's there. Right. So there were a lot of Aveda statues in in that in that event and um pretty much like evie like who is dressed as aveda because aveda's injured uh she uses her firepower which aveda does not have and yeah. that's like that's how everybody finds out and and um yeah like the reason why she uses her firepower is because her sister is drunk at the event and yeah like, kind of like, just shows and up she thinks she's in danger when yeah. those demons show up yeah yeah so. yeah so like her sister is it's a problem child, literally a problem child. <laughs> yeah. But she's also like the most important thing to her. Yeah. Yeah. I just wish she was not as annoying. Yeah. <laughs> or like more fleshed out a little bit. Yeah. Because, yeah, I think I feel like it was like, you know, that was like the main note with her was like to be a tempestuous, like yeah. angry also, teenager. Uh, young, young Twitter person. Right. Young Twitter person. Takes, yeah. She takes over uh, the social media job. 
Yeah. And she does a way better job. Well, yeah, because yeah. she's like in that generation. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I think it's right. interesting that the siblings, they, their powers are like tied to emotions, you know? Yeah. 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 Like you have to like be careful of like how you feel or just not care and right. just uh, let it loose. But I did want to mention uh, the movie that was constantly referenced <laughs> in this book, The Heroic Trio, which came out in 1992. It's a Hong Kong film that stars Michelle Yeoh, uh, Anna Mamui, and Maggie Cheng. And uh, they star as an all, like pretty much Charlie's Angels, but all, the Asian superhero version of that. And um, even even Aveda, they they kind of worship this movie. They constantly reference it, and it was actually a turning point for Aveda to become a superhero. They see right. the movie at a theater, and um, I have the quote down here. Um, Evie says. We knew we were witnessing something big enough to knock our world off its axis. Superheroes who looked like us. And I just kind of wanted to like ask you guys like like there's not that many Asian American or even Asian superheroes in yeah. media. So I don't know, like reading this book, like was it kind of like a fresh take on it or Sorry, I'm not forming my questions correctly. <laughs> I mean, it was definitely one of the reasons why I picked up the book was because of you no know, the representation, right? And that's been a big a big deal for especially for us in media this past like even two years. Yeah. And more, honestly, for those of us following it and been reporting on it. So just to have this book exist, I was like I was ready to like read through it, mm-hmm. whether I liked it or not, just because I wanted to consume it. Right. And like, luckily, I liked it a lot. <laughs> um, but definitely, like, it's we, we said this in the beginning, right, about the rep splits. It's yeah. it's kind of sad that because this is all that exists, and in, in addition to like a few other examples that we kind of map all of our expectations onto it. But at the same time, like the fact that it exists is like, I don't know, maybe it's a sign of sign of progress. I think it like definitely um like I, I know the Emmys happened like not that long ago, and mm-hmm. everybody, everybody kept talking about like Alan Yang's speech mm-hmm. on like it's like oh like parents give your children cameras and like so there can be more of us. And I think um, I thought it was actually pretty sad that like like Aveda and Evie had to look all the way back to a 1992 film yeah. <laughs> to like find role models, and it was just like oh that's right, there aren't that many. I wonder how the young folks who read this book will react to it. Will they have that same reaction? It's like, oh, like there's a superhero and she looks like me. Right. And like I can become that. Well, I, you can't really become superheroes <laughs> in real life. But like we're all superheroes. Unless you're an actor and then you decide <laughs> <laughs> to be a superhero in a movie. But um, yeah, like I thought that was pretty, pretty unique. I mean, you don't really see that. Uh, in books, they don't really talk about right, like the thing, like like specific media yeah. or like representative media. I thought it was that fake. No, me too. Yeah, yeah. it's just like oh, there's no way that like this can be an actual movie. I I am DVD <laughs> it, and I was like, oh, it's an actual movie. Yeah, I mean it's true though. Like for a lot of us growing up, the only time we ever saw Asians in leading roles or as heroes were was in Asian media, like Chinese films, Korean films, Japanese films. You know, so it's um culturally accurate too because they didn't have this book for themselves right mm-hmm, the characters yeah. so they had they had asian media yeah um well let's um let's wrap it up with yeah. some final thoughts um any final thoughts final thoughts um like i said i like i cringed i laughed <laughs> i uh had issues with the guys in this book um <laughs> <laughs> I was, I was reading out. this on the plane, so I had to be quiet. I'm a very, like, emotional reader. <laughs> if a, if something, if a little something, like, pisses me off, I'll just kind of, like, chuck the book and just go, <laughs> ah! But, but I couldn't do that on the plane. But I think that's a sign that I actually enjoyed it. And, uh, like, it was a fun experience. Um, it was definitely a genre fiction. Like, it was a genre book. It's not going to... If you're looking for something serious, 
this isn't yeah. it. This is <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. this is not it. Yeah. Um, but with that, yeah, like, I, I enjoyed it. Yeah, I liked it a lot. Um, I would, like, generally would recommend it. But, yeah, it is a very genre book. So, you know, if you're not into superheroes or any of that, you might want to, like, think about it. Yeah, you think know? about I it. I wouldn't say, like, don't pick it up. I'm, you know, because I think... I think, you know, it's, like, it has, like, interesting characters, and, again, it's great that there's, like, well, two Asian-American, like, leads, plus, like, a lot of women in the yeah. book, you know? So it's, like, you get lo- different facets of, like, female characters. But, um, but yeah, like, you know, it, it, it is very heavy on, like, you'll enjoy it more if you like superhero stuff or genre stuff. And comedy. If you don't, if you yeah, don't like humor. Yeah, then, it's a funny book. Yeah. So it's not, like it's not there to make you like think about your life in a very deep way <laughs> unless you want it to. <laughs> yeah. It's, so. it's like very much like in the vein of like a lot of um, comedy superhero movies that have like been yeah. coming out, like where like it has all this like kind of like lore and world that is there, but it's not there for you to kind of like poke and prod at it because it doesn't hold up, you know? It's right. Like, like you're just supposed to like, accept it and enjoy it like suspend your disbelief and like yeah you know because, try to go with the story yeah the great things that are in the book are off to the you know the side of those other stories right like where it's like it's about the relationship between these two friends like it's like you know i mean you would go to like something like your more standard hollywood fair which is like you know captain america and stuff and it's like it's like do you really care about his relationship with iron man like not really <laughs> like like you're just there to watch like, people punch each other but they're friends. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, um, definitely if you enjoy this type of um, like comic book or hero type stories, you'll definitely find a lot of things here that you can relate to. If you enjoy like YA type stories in general, I think there's a lot to relate to as well. Yeah. Um, I am a little like for me, when I get into like a, a, a world, I do want to like start digging into the lore I'm the same kind of yeah. super excited that there's going to be more books coming out from Sarah soon from this world so maybe you know who knows this might we might learn more about the demon world but um, yeah I definitely echo everyone like this um, yeah my final thoughts are that I liked it a lot uh, it was a great read it was definitely a refreshing just characters in general just um I would recommend it to everyone, but I would also recommend it with the caveat. Like, well, I would know. Like, some certain some of my friends just have no patience for demons and fantastical things, right? Yeah, yeah, that's what I mean. Like, yeah, <laughs> I, there are people I know who just like aren't into genre things, and that's yeah. fine. But yeah. it'd be harder for them to enjoy this book. I'll I think. tell them it's good and I'll explain mm-hmm. what it is, and they'll, they'll roll their eyes. But, yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah, but you'll you'll make them read them. And uh, yeah. I mean, like the the reason why like I wanted to make this book club uh, was because. There are so many different genres that Asian American writers and Asian authors uh, dabble in, you know, like some books have Asian American protagonists, some don't, some write fantasy, some write memoirs. It's there's a lot of diversity in this sub genre of not sub genre, but it's just like. We all we we don't all write the joy like club, yeah. you know. Like it's not. It's the same with like any media, right? Film. Yeah. Like, it's not all about us finding our identity or coming to terms with yeah. it. Yeah, or being that. martial artists. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. I mean, there was some martial arts in this book. Yeah. But, like you know, that wasn't the center of it. it yeah. Yeah. And like you know, like we said, there's two of them, and not both of them aren't martial artists. You know. Yeah. I mean, Evie kind of has to learn a little, but you know. Like ultimately, they're I mean, not just. That comes a, with the territory. You, you, yeah. you don't need a punch and kick if you're just going to burn stuff. Yeah, if yeah, you're going to burn exactly. Things, yeah, <laughs> but yeah, it's like um, your class. Come on, fire beats fists. And <laughs> fire beats grass. Yeah, that's what you mean, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. We're probably going to wrap this up. Yeah. Right? Yes. So, um, yeah, that was um, episode one of Books and Boba. Um, this was uh, Rira. Myself, Marvin, <laughs> uh, Alice, um, Dan, and also Scott Okamoto earlier talking about Sarah Kuhn's Heroin Complex available now at bookstores and online. Um, I guess what's next with the book club? We have a couple books in consideration, but I think it would be very selfish if I just picked the book. So what we're probably going to do is on our Facebook page, if you haven't liked our Facebook page, uh, do so now. Um, we're going to have a poll up. 
we're going to have a poll uh, with three books. And uh, by the end of the month, I guess, before October, uh, we'll pick the most uh, most liked book. And that will be the pick of the month. Yeah. So um, if you're listening to this uh, when it comes out, then you can help us choose the next book. If not, just check out our Facebook page. It's Books and Boba. Um, you can also find us at Goodreads. And also uh, you can find the podcast at booksandboba.com. Please um, like, subscribe. And uh, if you do listen to us on iTunes, please leave us a rating and review. If enough people do that, then we can get on the, um, the new and noteworthy list maybe. So we'll see. Let's see if we have there. Keep reading. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that'll do it. Oh, wait. Okay. Wait. <laughs> we also do live meetups. Uh, so right before this recording, we did have a live meetup to talk about Heroin Complex with a wider um, array of people. So if you'd like to join our book club, and um, if you're in the LA area, please come to our next live meetup where we can talk in person and get more get more perspectives on, on the next book that we read. And if you can't join us, that's what this podcast is for. So thanks for listening. This has been Books and Boba. We'll be back next month with hopefully some more Boba and books. Bye, everyone. Thank you for listening to Books and Bova. This podcast was produced and edited by Marvin Yue. Special thanks again to our guests, Alice Van Chank, Scott Okamoto, and Dan Rickmers. You can learn more about Books and Bova and our upcoming live meetups on our Facebook page. And be sure to join our Goodreads group to stay updated. Books and Boba is a part of the Potluck Podcast Collective, a collective of podcasts and podcasters featuring unique voices and stories from the Asian American community. Learn more about the collective as well as check out other podcasts by Asian Americans by going to the website podcastpotluck.com. And thanks again for listening to Books and Boba. We'll see you next time. <laughs>